Greetings all here, the good tonight here, and today we're going to be discussing a very hotly debated topic. Today's topic being the low port or low ready, which varies in extremity, as well as the high port, the high ready, which can go from here all the way up to here, and occasionally one-handed. So, pros and cons to each, and we're going to kind of discuss why. Now, there is a lot of um, people who are very, very diehard one end of the spectrum or the either, either and generally these people are... I mean, they're on a spectrum, so you tell me. What you got going on is people who go, oh, well, you got the low ready, your weapon's already stocked in the shoulder, you can just lift up, pop the target. Why would you bother lifting your weapon all the ways up here? That's stupid. And your other people are like, oh, well, super special, hardcore Navy SEAL operators are always carrying the weapons up here. Isn't that neat? Look how fast you can run with it. If you're carrying your weapon down here, what are you trying to do? Get dirt in your muzzle? <laughs> Idiot. <laughs> and that's... More or less how those discussions have been going. So, I know the way I was taught, obviously. I haven't done a whole lot of the high, por high carry. But there are merits and purposes to each. And honestly, I would consider these more of two different tools you're keeping in your toolbox. And, I mean, you don't want to use a screwdriver for a job that requires a crowbar and vice versa. So... There is a purpose to each, and that's going to be how we're kind of going to cover this, because occasionally you're going to want to use one or the other. So, tactically wise, if you're walking out on patrol and stuff, low carry makes a lot of sense. Your weapon's down here, a lot of the weight's being covered, carried by the sling, it's giving your arms a chance to kind of rest, so that they're pumped up and ready if you do hit engagement and come into contact. So, that's the thing to consider. You can move pretty smoothly with the weapon this way, you're not really exerting yourself. It's a bit more relaxed and tactical, if you will, as opposed to dynamic combat-wise. So it's easy. Walk around, out on patrol. You got your weapon ready. If you come across a corner or something, and you need to clear that, and you need to clear the corner without flagging yourself, you can bring the... I, I really like vertical foregrips for this very reason, is you can get the gun up here. And if you come across anyone who's like crouching down there, you go, okay, pop, pop, pop. Very easy. Pop, pop, pow, pew, 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 and get rid of them, so... It's very easy. You're only firing a 223 here. This might be a bit less comfortable with AKs and shotguns, but it's very easy. Come around the corner, look around, and have your muzzle up and ready. Especially if you're not carrying a handgun. So, yeah, that's neat. So that's one of the cool things. Additionally, if targets do pop up, you're ready. Things you won't be able to do as quickly with the high carry. However, there are going to be some downsides to the low carry in situations where you're not going to want to use it. Now, if the enemy is below you, this is great. If you're coming up over, if you're on top of a roof and you look down and there's some of the uh, malaligned actors. One of my favorite words of all time, by the way. You have malaligned actors down there. You go, okay, let's um, make sure they're not acting anymore. Do, 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 do. So, cool. Now, before we get into the cons, let's start looking at the high carry. So the high carry, high port. You got your weapon up here. You can have it, you generally have it more chicken wings, so you can one arm it. Which is nice, because that gives you your left arm free, like you're not using a sling. But it gives you positive control over the weapon, always good. Um, and yeah, this is going to be far more dynamic. So, if you're room clearing and stuff like that, and you got the guy in front of you, you have your weapon up relatively safe. And uh, yeah, you come in, your guy starts clearing left, and here's a big thing that I noted, is that when people are generally going, they're driving the gun forward, they're usually leaned in a bit. Lots of good positive recoil control, but as you can see, my waist is down here, my upper body is jutting forward. What that creates is a bit of a pocket in that uh, back triangular section where if I come in and I'm going this way, and the dude behind me sees contact off over this way, he doesn't, if he's coming in low, he's going to be bashing me up in the legs, trying to get his weapon up, or flagging me, or doing all sorts of crazy stuff to get to that target. So although this is faster, the fact that he's got me going this way, now he can come in in that little triangular space and shoot basically over my back and hips and stuff and engage that target faster. So, situationally, we got people in close, confined spaces. It's easy to come up this way. He doesn't have to worry about crazy other stuff going on. In addition, if you're inside a building or on a ship where there are multiple upward stories, being able, having a dude pop up in a window over here, it's going to be quicker to be able to just pull the weapon off this way, get it shouldered and on that target, then it's going to be to come from down here and be like, oh, there's a guy! 
And all the way up to here, pretty quick. Coming up to here, you're going a bit over the uh, halfway point, so. Stuff to consider. Useful to be able to come up from here real quick. Dude, way up on top of a tower over there. You're going through the position, and the guy's like, hey, it's 12 noon. The moon's out. The moon can't be out during the day. That's illegal, boys. Shoot it down. These are things that are going to happen. you got, you got to be ready for this. So, you got to shoot down the moon during the day. It's a law. I don't make, I don't make the laws, but you got to shoot down the moon. So, or shoot for the moon. I don't think your rounds are going to end up in the stars. They're probably going to come back down to Earth. But hey, maybe you have a very big gun. <laughs> So, things to consider. So, hi Carrie, going through buildings, working around guys who are also bringing their weapons down as they go into clear rooms. Although the low carry, if you got a guy crossing in front of you, you can easily get the weapon down and clear his feet so you're not going to be flagging him or any of that very, very no bueno things that require us to keep medical supplies ready at all times. <sighs> Even in training. So. That's really the key thing. So, what are the downsides you got going on? Well, oh, did I cover running? I don't think I did. I've been, I've done like eight takes of this already. So, running wise, high carry is fantastic because then you can sprint down there and you can get on target. This mimics uh, basically running to begin with. If your weapon's low carry, you're not going to be moving as quick, and you're going to have your weapon down here. There's a chance of bumping into mud and stuff depending on how long it is. Whereas, less so a problem here, and you got a free hand, left hand free if you need to move around stuff and get going, so another big benefit if you're running around with the high carry, so if there's bunkers and stuff you're going to be shooting over, it's easy to just put the weapon up over there if you're more so out in the field and stuff, or indoors you also got options for low so it's really, as you can see, it's more of a situational issue and not so much one's better than others, if you're outside and there's all sorts of thick waist-high vegetation you're going to want to be high you don't want your muzzle getting caught and stuff and things getting all up on your weapon platform and whatnot, so. At the same time, indoors, occasionally you're going to have very low ceiling heads or maybe you're just one of those stupid tall guys who has to bump his head on everything and now you're going to be also bumping your weapon. If your weapon's longer than a Mark 18, surprise, most weapons are, um, especially M16s and stuff, trying to go in through a door, bonk, your weapon's now caught on a ceiling frame. You gotta watch out for that. Whereas you can fix that. So if you got low overhead, even though you got, I mentioned the benefit of being able to shoot over your guys, you might have to just come around the side of them and get the weapon up that way. Or really tuck it down into that chicken wing position so it's out of the way. Now, towing around the corner, you know the benefit of the low ready being able to come in from here. If you're doing it from the high ready, now you got your corner here and you're like, oh, well, I got to clear this. Now you got to really pull that weapon in and you got to bring it down this way. So you got an awkward thing, I guess it'd be easier to twist because you're not going to really want to take your hand off of there. Then you come up, if someone's up on a stairwell or something, you can engage them pretty easy from down here. Your rounds are probably going to be all over the place because you're not really going to have a lot of control where you're shooting, but if someone's a bit lower, that's when you have a bit of a problem. You can do it, but it's rougher than your low ready position. So, I feel like we've talked relatively ad nauseum about few of the different benefits and stuff and how people are very very die hard on their own end of the spectrum but again as I mentioned how my stance comes down to it is there's different tools for different situations you really got to choose which one you like best so with all that being said and like you covering a lot of the different uh, capabilities advantages and disadvantages for low carry and high carry I'd be very much curious to hear which one you prefer or if you're also more of a hey mold the uh, tool to the situation, use low carry when low carry is appropriate, high carry when high carry is appropriate, or if you honestly, or if you really think that maybe there should only be one universal carry that's done throughout and not run the risk of people getting mentally confused and strung up on trying to optimize their carry for what they're doing. So that's all I really got for you guys for today's video what I wanted to cover different uh, things. In addition, it's not just rifles that you can do this with. Handguns also have it with a low carry down here and a high carry up here. And even the one-handed one up here. So, eh, look how cool I am. <laughs> so, it applies to a lot of different things. And even then, handguns can get into that weird, you start getting that crazy defensive 
hanging stuff going on too. So lots of things to consider. I'm definitely curious to hear what you guys might want to say. I have to say in the comments about it, but honestly, I say use the right tool for the right job, unless something very specific is stopping you. But then, is it really the right tool? Although unit SOPs are going to be one of those things that come into account. So. That's all I got. Interesting to hear what you guys want to say. All the different benefits. Maybe you guys got some advantages and disadvantages I didn't cover in this video. Again, I filmed it like 10 times, so which one I stuck with and what I said earlier versus what got said right now. It's got a bit of a disparity. Also, my uh, there's a fun little disease going around through the year and it's making everyone sick right now, so something to consider. So. With that all done, cheers everyone, stay chivalrous, I'll be looking forward to seeing what you guys got put down in the comments, and uh, yeah, stay classy, see you guys.